This last week, I walked into a television studio and met four other guys, and we began to have conversation in many different languages. Within the group, we had at least 20 different languages that we could speak, and this was so much fun for me as a, as a language learner. I'll tell you what happened. One of uh, Canada's uh, national TV networks called uh, Global TV was producing a show on hyperpolyglots, and the definition that we were using for this project was people who speak six languages or more. So they gathered together five Canadian polyglots and they brought me to Toronto for this and uh, one of my uh, local uh, uh, compadres here who uh, is also uh, multilingual um, and uh, they they wanted to talk about uh, talk with us about our language learning experience and our methods and and uh, how we got to this place. But this was so so cool for us to stand there and have this conversation. And we spoke for a bit in French, and then we switched to Spanish, and then we switched to German. And and some of the guys could speak uh, um, Japanese very very well. I don't speak Japanese, so I could just stand there and admire these uh, these uh, talented guys. Uh, but what fun! And uh, one of the things that's in, that's very common with uh, language learners is describing the the exhilaration or the the joy that you get from using your languages. This was just such a cool experience. Uh, we had a lot of things in in common, and I, I found it really interesting to meet other guys who speak multiple languages and find out what was the same about us and what was different. And that was part of the point of this this forum. They wanted to ask us about whether we thought we had a gift and whether we use similar methods and uh, um, you know, the, the, the things that, that made us similar to one another, but also the things that made us different from one another. So what was interesting is that some of the, the, the five people in the group use books a lot. And you can see behind me that I've got a, a ton of books. But the truth is that books don't play a big role in my language learning after a certain point. At first, I, I, I use books. I always want to get a, a picture of how the language works uh, the overall structure, what's the basic pattern of this language, give me the big ideas and I'll refine it later but I just want to have the basic idea of how these, how my new language works and I find books really helpful for that and I do refer to them but I don't, for me, I don't think that people become bilingual from books. Um, I, you know, I, I, I think that we need to interact with the real world and use our target languages. So within the group of, of polyglots, some of us use language learning books a lot and other ones not so much. Uh, some of the people, one of the most interesting people that I have met uh, recently is Steve Kaufman, who speaks some 11 languages. I, I mean, I got to check the count all the time because they keep going up. Uh, but Steve Kaufman is a, a talented linguist. He um, runs a uh, service for language students called Link, which you can find on the internet. Um, but one of the things that he does, really different from me, is he will study a language sometimes for years before he speaks it. And uh, I just couldn't possibly do that. And I got talking with one of the other guys on the forum, and he said, you know, I, I have to learn, my, I have to use my languages early on. So I am perfectly content to go out and speak some language that I know very little of and, and put it to work early on because that's what really keeps me motive, motivated, uh, that contact with real people and accomplishing some kind of a task in my new language. Uh, tonight I was talking with one of my employees who teaches Italian classes for my company and uh, we spoke in Italian on Skype. That was super cool because Italian is very new to me. I mean, I speak Spanish, so that helps to tackle a language that has similar structure and some vocabulary. There's some overlap there. Uh, but tomorrow, I'm going to go to the doctor's office, and I know that one of the receptionists speaks Italian. So my plan is to make my doctor's appointment entirely in Italian. And uh, I love doing that. I, I want to put my languages to work all the time. But other guys, they'll study for a long time before they, they, they start talking. Uh, so that was a difference. Uh, some people speak early, some people wait a little while. Some people use technology a lot. I, I do. I'm kind of a gadget guy. I love my iPhone. I, I, I buy good dictionaries. Uh, I would say also that if you are a language student and you're going to buy a dictionary for your iPhone or some other kind of smartphone that you might have, uh, this is not a place to, get, to uh, go cheap. 
you can save pennies and lose dollars. Way better to get a good dictionary and spend a few bucks. I think the dictionaries that I bought for my iPhone in French and Spanish and German and Portuguese are probably the most expensive apps that I bought uh, of anything that I've, I've put on my on my iPhone. But they're also the best investment. I will sit and watch TV and uh, in French and look up words while I'm watching TV. Or I'll be sitting there thinking about in the doctor's office perhaps and I'm looking around the room and I'll be trying to talk to myself about everything that's happening and everything I'm seeing and I'll look up the words while I'm there not reminding myself later when I get home I'll look it up but while I'm uh, on the scene uh, I'll look up the, the words that I know if I know that I'm going somewhere and I'm going to use uh, my new language I'll prepare a little bit I'll look up the key words that I'm going to need before I get there on my iPhone uh, I've even used Google Translate sometimes to get a phrase or something that would help me to accomplish my task in the target language. So I love gadgets. I love my uh, Amazon Kindle, I, an, an e-book reader. Um, I'm always reading uh, books in my target language and uh, picking up new material there. Uh, it's great because I carry you know hundreds of books on on one light device that I can you know throw in my. Uh, in my briefcase or in my bag when I'm when I'm out so I like technology I like some of the websites I mentioned Steve Kaufman's uh, link program which I think is uh, uh, very helpful very helpful well thought out um, but another thing that was uh, that we found when we talked about our language learning materials whether we use technology or books or whatever is that our methods change a little bit I mentioned that uh, when I start a language I do enjoy getting a book and figuring out how this language works, getting the big picture early on. I want a fairly complete picture of the overall structure of my target language very quickly. I can't get through the book fast enough. I want to know how they talk about the past and how they talk about the future and and how they put uh, how they use grammatical patterns to convey uh, information. And it's not that I uh, can use all of the things that I've learned right away, but I want to get the big picture. I want to say, how does this thing work? And uh, is this language similar or different from Spanish, which I speak? Uh, is it how? Do, what's the word order? Does it have genders? Is there masculine and feminine? Uh, things like that. I like to get the big picture, um, but not that's not mastering the language. And studying a book like that will never make you bilingual. It's a useful step. It's helpful, and I do it all the time. But that books will not make you bilingual by themselves. You have to internalize that information somehow. And that's one of the things that I absolutely obsess about. I think a lot about when I have a, a, a new language book, how do I get this material from this book and into my head? When I buy a, a, a vocabulary book with four and a half thousand new French words in it or something, um, I have steps. I have absolute consistent steps that I use to transfer that vocabulary from my book and into my head and uh, I'm always refining that not just for my own use but because I'm a language teacher I want to tell my students what they can do so that they could learn a thousand new words in a month and some of my students the ones who want to are learning a thousand words a month uh, so that's a that's one of the uh, efficiencies that you developed that you develop when you are becoming multilingual you will find, and the polyglots that I spoke with, these multilingual uh, guys that met with me in Toronto, uh, that you become more and more efficient at acquiring new language patterns and new vocabulary. It doesn't require nearly as much exposure, once you've had a little bit of experience, to get that material inside and to internalize it and to make it work for you. The first time you take on a new language, it's considerable work. It will take you a lot longer to make progress in your first uh, non-native language. But once you're down to your third and fourth and fifth and sixth, uh, you know exactly what you've got to do. You know the plan of attack. You know what the key issues are. You know how to get a, a, a broad picture of your target language. And you know what to do next. And you know where you're going to go. But uh, all of the polyglots in our group, all of these multilingual guys, would all say the same thing. We are not finished learning any language, even English, which is my, my mother tongue. I'm not finished learning English. Uh, if I take on some new 
uh, area of study, I'm going to have to learn more English. But all my other languages are at, at different levels. And all of the multilingual uh, people in this forum said the same thing. Uh, my languages are, some of them are very incomplete. And uh, some of them are very comfortable for me. Uh, so when I go out and speak languages, the first thing that I need to say, and the, f the first thing that I would definitely want to say on YouTube, is that I'm not trying to impress somebody with, you know, I speak, you know, all of these multiple languages with absolute fluency and proficiency. I speak some languages quite well. I speak some languages enough to do anything I need to do. I speak some languages kind of poorly, and I test the patience of the people I'm talking with. And there's probably 50 languages that I can say some things in. Um, and they're all over the map. So uh, we're, not finished, we're not finished learning anything. So none of the uh, very proficient uh, uh, multilingual people, uh, and some of these extremely talented people that you will see on YouTube, none of them would say, I have mastered all of these languages. Actually, if they do, you might as well switch to somebody else's YouTube channel because it's... I think it's a little bit of uh, arrogance. We're all learning and we're all making progress and none of us are complete. Uh, none of us are all done, but we're, we keep pressing on. Another thing that we find is that the levels of proficiency in our other languages can drift a little bit. So for example, I haven't used German much in recent years. And my German I would describe as largely dormant. Uh, it's there. And uh, I know that if I was dropped off in Germany for a year, I'd be speaking German fairly quickly. But at the moment, it's, it's sleeping. And this absolutely happens. Most of the, the people that I've talked to would say, you know, we can keep, you know, four, five, or six languages uh, functioning fairly well. And other ones, they just need to move to the background. Uh, but they can, be, they can be called back rather quickly. So recovery is very quick, which is also true if you grew up with a language in your home, if your family uh, perhaps spoke Ukrainian or something, and you say, well, you know, I, I spoke Ukrainian when I was a kid, but it's completely gone. You know, it's probably not completely gone. And you'd be surprised that with the right, with the right approach and with a little consistent effort, you'd be amazed at how much is there. Uh, languages go to sleep, but they can be woken up uh, fairly quickly. Uh, some of the things that uh, polyglots will tell you in common is, generally speaking, uh, we would say that being multilingual is not a gift. In fact, some people are quite offended by the, the implication that this is a gift, as if I didn't really have to do any work, I didn't have to make any effort, and all the years that I spent with my uh, learning materials were just, you know, meaningless. You know, if you could wake up magically speaking some new language, man, I'd be the first guy in line for that to happen. I've never met anybody like that. Sure, some people have a, a, a better aptitude. They, they get somewhat better results from the same amount of time. But generally speaking, that's the result of practice. And uh, we would all say that once we had learned a few languages, the next one came better and better and better. And I think that, in part, that's what makes me a, a better language teacher. Um, I wouldn't like to be described as a gifted, uh, um, a gifted polyglot or language user, but I might be, uh, might be comfortable being called a gifted teacher, and uh, one of the reasons for that is that all of these experiences that I've had in learning how to learn, I can pass these on to my students, and they learn languages much faster than I did. Some of my Spanish-speaking students now. They made progress in Spanish in a couple of years that took me many years. They're speaking so much better and so much faster. But that's partly because I've been able to share with them some of the things that I found out along the way. It just gets faster and faster the more you do it. It, it is very much like a muscle. The, the muscle that gets used is the one that gets strong. So in particular, memory. Uh, memory is uh, key to learning languages, but it's not those those fancy memory tricks or anything. Just using languages and continuing to work at your languages will develop your memory specifically in the area of language learning and you'll find that you can pick up a lot of words in a very short time, that you can uh, use patterns of language that you saw very recently and didn't really practice very much. It becomes more and more efficient 
and uh, your memory gets stronger and stronger and less and less uh, exposure to new patterns and new vocabulary is required in order for them to be internalized. Uh, probably one of the most important things that you can learn from people who've learned uh, multiple languages is that cramming is useless. There is no high-powered uh, weekend course that's going to launch you into speaking fluent Russian or something. It's a little exposure, or as much as you, you can devote the time to, over and over and over again. Consistency. Uh, far better to spend 15 minutes a day uh, reading a bit of French or working your way through a textbook if you're just starting, uh, reading some French online, watching a bit of French TV, a little bit every day will pay off many times more than the same amount of time done in one crash course on a Saturday, saying, you know, on Saturday I'm going to spend five hours studying French. Well, good for you. Sounds exhausting to me. But, you know, most of us would probably say that we spend an hour a day on a new language, and some of us a little bit more. Uh, but that is super key. So do not exclude yourself. If, if Don't tell yourself that you're not a good language learner or that uh, you don't have this gift. The truth is everybody in the world uses languages, and everybody has picked up a language before. Everybody has. And you can learn some things from efficient language learners that will help you do this a lot faster and a lot more, a lot more efficiently with better results. But you are absolutely capable of learning another language. I hope that's encouraging, and uh, I enjoyed sharing this with you. I'll see you soon again on YouTube.